notice of application. In fact, I looked at the note yesterday. We have a non-possession receipt. You have the original? We have the original with lodged that note. So I verified that. So that, I don't believe, is an issue, as well as the original mortgage documents. I physically looked at those. I object because this is here to say, hang on just a minute. So we do have the right and authority to move forward under state foreclosure laws. Okay. And I would object to this because there's no bank representative present. So for the lawyer to be here, it's just simply hearsay. Also, that needs to be in the court record. And we would need to have a forensic audit to find out if this paperwork is actually a real true paper, as stated. Also, there's three things going on. The reason I had a motion to dismiss the counterclaim is because, one, you yourself had put them in default for not showing up to the original hearing. Two, they failed to request the hearing, a motion to vacate the default judgment. And three, they failed to file the counterclaim within the 10 days allotted for that process. Then, when they did file the counterclaim, I started to prepare paperwork in response. And then you dismissed the case for two reasons, one being that I neglected to present the money that was requested, and two was the other reason that you had. That you're not a party in interest. No, that I am a party in interest. Oh, that's right, because of the party in interest that we had, the quick claim. And I presented to you with my motion to dismiss an updated quick claim. And the original intention always was for my son to turn that over to me because with a new baby, he couldn't deal with all this court process. And so he gave up all his claims to me, and I am the real party in interest since I'm the one that has been carrying the burden of the property this whole time. So, and then, anyway, so as I started to respond to the counterclaim, then I received your dismissal of the whole case based on those two things. So then after that, after they were dismissed, they came back afterwards with a counterclaim. And then you dismissed it. And then I asked for a dismissal of the counterclaim based on the fact of the default, the three items that I just gave you. Plus, then I had made up the quick claim and corrected that mistake that I had made. And second, I created, I put up the bond. And for my bond would be to put into escrow the wedding original mortgage and note together into escrow. And that would be my bond, which would be more valuable than the money that the court had requested. So that's what I would like to present. So I created the two. I'm not following with you why you think putting, so you want them to put the original documents in escrow with the court? Absolutely, because it needs to be verified. And for him to stand here and say it's verified. How is that a bond for you? Pardon me? How is that a bond? How does that secure anything? Because there's two parties that are in dispute. And there are two objects. There's the real property, and then there's the note and the mortgage and all derivatives therefrom. So no one party can have both items. They either have the paper or they have the property. And if they want to foreclose and take the real property, then the actual paper has to be turned over to me, to the court. And it has to be verified. Yes, for the record. Say that position. I have case law, which is in here. There is a case, which I will give to you. And this will be my motion for reconsideration of injunction. All right, let's do this. Okay. All we're on for today is the steps. So I have pending your motion to dismiss the counterclaim. Yes, I dismissed your claim on February 15th. You dismissed their claim through default on December 8th. All right. So, yeah, no, I'm talking about yours. And so now all that's left is the counterclaim. The counterclaim, and then I'm motioning to dismiss the counterclaim. Okay. All right, that sounds good. So let me do this. I will take a look at that. You have not responded to the motion to dismiss the counterclaim. Where is that? I can't read it. It's dated the 11th. Yeah, March 7th. All right, so. I don't know off the top of my head. Let me see if I can. Yeah, I can't read it. It's the standard. To the extent that a response is required, we'll follow the response. Yeah, we've got a response. 
Okay. File a response and then we'll go from there. And then I'd like, can I put a motion in now then? What would you like to motion? A reconsideration of the injunction. Since I have created, since I have repaired the two mistakes that I had made, now I would like to go back with a non-protocol request for the court to order to go back to the original injunction. All right. Then just a couple of quick things. As a former licensed title insurance producer in New Hampshire, I paid a visit to Merrimack Mortgage the other day because certainly some of the lawyers associated with the case, including Sean Masterson, don't want to talk to me. And they don't want to talk to me because they've got fake documents in the record. Like That's a fake assignment. So how can he possibly have a real wet ink note? I mean, we're all waiting to see it. Ms. Ingress is, you know, totally beside herself. And can you blame her? I'm sorry, Counsel. I'm all the confusion. I'm not sure if you heard my question. Did you have a verified? Sorry, uh, did you have a verified? Response. I have no comment. Thank you. <laughs> We're on location here in uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, with Jeannie Ingress and um, Sean Masterson, the counsel for Sheckman, Halpern, and Savage, indicated during the court hearing that. Well, tell us what he indicated during the court hearing regarding the uh, wedding note. Well, he said that he verified that he had looked in his drawer and that he found it, lo and behold, the wedding original signature note and mortgage, to which I objected as hearsay because, first of all, there was no bank officer in the court and he was just the lawyer representing them, so I, he had no proof, nothing else. He just told the judge, yeah, I have it, don't worry about it, it's all cool, so give me the house, baby. That's basically what he says. And then not only is the problem that even if he did happen to have the wedding note in his drawer, which he shouldn't have there, but even if he had it there, um, it does not go to the point of whether or not there's a verified chain of custody of that note. Hello, Counsel. Chris King, KingCast.net. How are you? Thank you. Okay. Can you tell us what just happened here? Basically, you're scheduling out the uh, balance of the proceedings in the case? Uh, just one quick question, though. Do you have a verified chain of uh, custody for the uh, wedding note or the mortgage? Sir? Do you have any questions? Um, there's nothing for me to sign because I have an attorney. Is that correct? Uh, you can sign it for yourself. You'd be, you'd be representing yourself. So not as attorney. So you can put your, your name. Just put it in. I'm sorry, Counsel. I'm all the confusion. I'm not sure if you heard my question. Did you have a verified? Sorry, I didn't uh, did you have a verified? Response. I have no comment. Thank you. Oh, so you don't you won't answer whether or not there's a verified chain of custody for the uh, note or anything? Okay.